Step into the captivating world of The Twilight Zone, a groundbreaking TV show that mixed science fiction, fantasy, and suspense. Created by Rod Serling, the series debuted in 1959 and became a hit with audiences. As you explore the episodes, you'll uncover many interesting and sometimes surprising facts. So, keep watching to discover the secrets hidden within each twist and turn. Have you ever thought about how the Twilight Zone has affected your life? Maybe you have a special memory connected to an episode that really stuck with you. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Get ready for a journey where reality and imagination blend together and surprises await at every turn. Stay tuned for more fascinating insights into the Twilight Zone. In 1959, a groundbreaking TV series known as The Twilight Zone hit the screens, leaving a lasting impression on culture. When it first aired, viewers were drawn to its mix of sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. Each episode told a standalone story with a surprising ending, making people think about right and wrong society and being human. During its run, The Twilight Zone gained praise for its fresh storytelling and deep themes. It quickly influenced other TV shows, movies, and books. Even today, its impact can be seen in stories exploring the unknown and supernatural. The Twilight Zone led to spin-offs like a 1980s revival and a 2019 reboot, keeping its spirit alive for new audiences. Its memorable phrases and images are now found on everything from t-shirts to toys. In summary, The Twilight Zone left its mark on culture, inspiring storytellers to push the limits of imagination. It's a reminder of the power of good storytelling and the appeal of mystery and horror. Ranked as the 8th best cult show ever by TV Guide, The Twilight Zone still captures people's attention with its mysterious and imaginative stories. Paul Mazursky, who got his bachelor's degree in theater from Brooklyn College in New York City in 1951, contributed to the show's impact with his creative work. Meanwhile, James Best, famous for his role in The Dukes of Hazard, spent time with former co-stars Catherine Bach, Sorrel Book, and Rick Hurst at the Black Gold Festival in Hazard, Kentucky in 1981. The Twilight Zone is a classic example of great TV storytelling, telling stories that connect with viewers of all ages. During its run, The Twilight Zone served as a platform for rising talents. For instance, James Best, who later attended the Mayberry reunion in 1995, where he reunited with fellow cast members from The Andy Griffith Show. Similarly, Jack Klugman, another notable figure, was honored on the best of the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast in 1998. Moreover, the show played a pivotal role in shaping the careers of many aspiring actors. Individuals such as Robert Redford, Veronica Cartwright, Robert Duvall, Jean Marsh, and Leonard Nimoy, among others, found their footing through their roles in the series. These actors, initially unknown to the broader audience, later became celebrated figures in the entertainment industry. The Twilight Zone's influence extended beyond its storytelling, providing a launchpad for talent and offering a glimpse into the potential of those who would go on to leave a lasting impact on the world of entertainment. Recognized for his work on the Western series, the loner Rod Serling found himself at a crossroads when the show faced cancellation after just 13 episodes, mainly because of its unusual storylines. Despite this setback, he went on to create subsequent series, none of which could quite capture the same level of success as The Twilight Zone. After the loner's cancellation, Serling, initially thinking he had coined the term The Twilight Zone, was surprised to find out it had been used earlier by U.S. Air Force pilots. This discovery added an interesting layer to the show's story, suggesting a connection between the mysterious realms of the series and the unseen horizons experienced by the pilots. The Twilight Zone, blending science fiction, fantasy, and psychological thrillers, received widespread acclaim from critics and audiences alike. The show not only broke the norms of television, but also cemented its status as a landmark in TV history. It made people think about life's mysterious and unexplained aspects. Despite challenges and doubts about its unconventional nature, The Twilight Zone proved to be a groundbreaking series that surpassed traditional TV storytelling limits. Rod Serling's influence lives on through the enduring appeal of the show, showcasing creativity and innovation in entertainment. It shows that extraordinary ideas can come from unexpected places. In conclusion, The Twilight Zone, with its enigmatic narratives and thought-provoking themes, demonstrates Rod Serling's storytelling ability and has left a lasting impression on television. In the world of television, The Twilight Zone has made a lasting impact since it first aired in 1959. The Simpsons and its Treehouse of Horror episodes pays tribute to The Twilight Zone through various parodies. These parodies mirror famous episodes like To Serve Man, It's a Good Life, and others. 
The creative mind behind The Twilight Zone, Rod Serling, considered the season 4 episode He's Alive as his best work. This particular episode explores fascism in a profound way. James Best, who later starred in The Dukes of Hazard, learned comedy from Jerry Lewis. His skill in comedy, seen in The Dukes of Hazard, was influenced by the famous comedian. In television history, The Twilight Zone, with its thought-provoking stories, continues to have an impact. Rod Serling's exploration of fascism and James Best's comedy are significant parts of television history. Rod Serling, the creator of the series, experienced nerves before his on-screen introductions, as various sources suggest. In the first season, he coined the phrase Six Dimension for the show's opening narration. When asked about the fifth dimension, he initially admitted uncertainty, prompting him to alter the narration to include it. Furthermore, James Best, who appeared in the series, had a close friendship with fellow actor Audie Murphy, forged during their time at Universal Studios. They collaborated on five films together until Murphy's unfortunate passing in 1971, marking the end of their camaraderie. In one version of The Twilight Zone, Rod Serling's voice is heard at the start, but you don't see his face in the opening credits. Instead, he talks. This version of the show is unique because of this. Jack Klugman, a well-known actor in the series, had health problems later in life. He had throat cancer in the 1970s and had surgery on his voice in 1989, which changed how he sounded. But Klugman kept acting, using his new voice in different roles like in The Odd Couple Together Again and Diagnosis Murder. Also, besides his TV work, Rod Serling's plays were studied by someone named Robert Marshall Hosfeld in 1961. Hosfeld looked at how Serling wrote his characters and stories, showing more about Serling's work in TV. In the world of TV, some actors connect different eras. Bill Mummy is one of them, appearing in both the old and new versions of The Twilight Zone. Another actor, Raymond Bailey, showed a different side of himself before the Beverly Hillbillies. He often didn't wear his wig, being more real in his earlier roles. James Best and his wife Dorothy started an acting school in Florida, helping actors for five years before stopping in 1988. These actors all left a lasting impression on TV history. In one memorable episode, Don Kiefer portrayed Dan Hollies, a townsman from Peaksville, Ohio, who harbored negative thoughts about six-year-old Anthony Fremont. As a consequence, he was transformed into a jack-in-the-box head, a fate swiftly wished away by Anthony into the cornfield to spare Dan's wife from the horror. Jack Klugman, recognized for his roles in television, particularly as Oscar Madison on The Odd Couple, and as the medical examiner on Quincy M.E., was a notable figure in film character acting. He was among the pioneers of television acting during the 1950s, Rod Serling, expressing disappointment in a televised interview, recounted an incident where a play he had written was canceled due to its controversial plot involving racism. As a replacement, Serling submitted a piece about the Mexican rebel leader Pancho Villa, though he was not entirely satisfied with this shift from his original work. Rod Serling, the creative force behind The Twilight Zone, candidly acknowledged the varying quality of the episodes. In his own assessment, he admitted that around one-third of the shows stood out as excellent, another third were deemed passable, while the remaining third fell into the category of being less impressive. Serling had a specific vision for the narration of the series, initially desiring Richard Egan for his rich and deep voice. However, due to contractual constraints at the studio during that time, Egan couldn't take on the role. Unwilling to compromise, Serling insisted, it's Richard Egan or no one. It's Richard Egan, or I'll do the thing myself. And ultimately, he took on the narration himself. Gladys Cooper, a notable actress, earned an Academy Award nomination for her performance in the musical My Fair Lady in 1964. She is one of 27 actresses who received this honor for their roles in musicals, a list that includes iconic names like Julie Andrews, Barbara Streisand, and Meryl Streep. The Twilight Zone, a groundbreaking series, thrived on Serling's commitment to his vision even when faced with challenges. The candid assessment of the episode's quality and the determination to have the narration he envisioned showcased the uncompromising spirit of the series. In the world of classic TV, there are some strong connections. For example, Jack Klugman and Tony Randall worked together long before their famous show. They first acted together in a play called The Pirate's House. This early teamwork set the stage for their later work in The Odd Couple. Another important person in TV history is Rod Serling. He wrote a script called Requiem for a heavyweight that won a big award in 1956. This showed how good he was at writing for TV and paved the way for more of his work. In a different part of TV, James Best and Robert Fuller became good friends. 
They met on the set of Laramie in 1959 when Best was a guest star. Their friendship lasted for 56 years until Best passed away in 2015, showing how strong bonds can be made in the entertainment world. Throughout its run, many actors who graced the screens of The Twilight Zone also made appearances on Perry Mason. Rod Serling, the mastermind behind the series, found himself on the Soupy Sales Show, receiving a pie in the face in 1962, among other famous faces. Morgan Brittany, another talent, had brief roles in Alfred Hitchcock's films The Birds and Marnie, showcasing her versatility. These connections highlight the intertwined nature of television during that era, where actors and creators often cross paths across different shows and projects. It's a testament to the collaborative spirit of the entertainment industry during that time. In a unique way, a comic book version of the series, hosted by the artistic image of Rod Serling, continued until 1982, seven years after Serling's passing. Gladys Cooper, known for her roles in famous films like Rebecca and My Fair Lady, appeared in five movies nominated for the Best Picture Oscar. It's interesting that almost all the men introduced in the first season, with Rod Serling's narration, were described as 36 years old. These details give more insight into the lasting popularity of the series. In one case, James Best, famous for his role in the Dukes of Hazard, worked with his old co-star John Schneider on two projects later on. These included a 2009 episode of CMT Cribs and the 2012 movie Return of the Killer Shrews, where Best played a character he did years ago. Meanwhile, Vladimir Sokolov started his career at the Moscow Art Theater and then became an actor and assistant director, moving to Berlin in 1923. As for The Twilight Zone, it has led to three spin-off shows, a movie, and a standalone TV movie. These additions have helped keep the original series influential across different mediums and formats. Gladys Cooper, twice nominated for Broadway's Tony Award as Best Actress for her performances in Enid Bagnall's The Chalk Garden and in A Passage to India. In 2023, Rod Serling was inducted into the official Horror Host Hall of Fame. He also appears on a 44 cents as a commemorative postage stamp issued 11 August 2009 in the early TV Memories issue honoring the Twilight Zone. Serling's contributions to the series continue to be celebrated, solidifying its place in television history. During the start of the show, Rod Serling often held a cigarette. The series was sponsored by Liggett and Myers, a tobacco company, and Serling would talk about Chesterfield cigarettes at the end of each episode. Later, he didn't promote another tobacco brand on screen, but still had to have a cigarette. James Best and Denver Pyle became friends while working together on The Left-Handed Gun in 1958. They worked together again on The Dukes of Hazard in 1979, with Pyle playing the Duke family's dad. They stayed friends for about 40 years until Pyle passed away in late 1997. In 2023, Rod Serling was nominated for the official Horror Host Hall of Fame, showing how much people still appreciate his work in the genre. Throughout its run, several actors made multiple appearances, including Jack Klugman, William Shatner, Burgess Meredith, Fritz Weaver, Warren Oates, Jack Warden, William Wyndham, and Martin Landau. Among them, Jack Klugman notably wed his girlfriend Peggy Crosby at the Little Brown Church in Studio City, California in early February 2008. Klugman also shared that his favorite episode of The Odd Couple was Password. These actors contributed to the show's enduring appeal and diverse range of stories, Two episodes of the series depict similar scenarios, a hidden alien among humans, readying for an invasion. In one, the alien remains unidentified, lurking in the shadows of ordinary life, its true nature concealed until the climax. In the other, the aliens manipulate human weaknesses, exploiting fear and anger to sow discord, and pave the way for their clandestine plans. James Best, known for his role in The Dukes of Hazard, watched his former co-star Tom Wapat in the musical Chicago with his wife Dorothy. Best, having shared many memorable moments on screen with Wapat, couldn't help but feel a sense of pride as he watched his friend's performance unfold on stage. Despite occasional disagreements and the occasional clash over trivial matters like dressing rooms during their time on the Dukes of Hazard, their bond remained strong, transcending any petty conflicts that may have arisen. The parallels between the on-screen drama of The Twilight Zone and the real-life dynamics among actors in the entertainment industry are striking. Just as characters in the show navigate through surreal and often unsettling situations, actors must navigate the complexities of their careers, facing challenges, and making compromises along the way. It's a reminder that sometimes truth can be stranger than fiction, even in the glitzy world of Hollywood. Before starring in The Twilight Zone, some actors worked together on different shows. 
For instance, Gladys Cooper acted alongside Jennifer Jones in a few movies like The Song of Bernadette, Love Letters, and Madame Bovary. Interestingly, the famous phrase submitted for your approval is only heard in three episodes of The Twilight Zone Cavender is coming in praise of Pip and a kind of a stopwatch. Despite speaking little English when he arrived in the U.S., Vladimir Sokolov landed a lead role in a play called Danton's Death, directed by Orson Welles. Welles helped Sokolov learn English sounds for the role. This collaboration between Sokolov and Welles showed Sokolov's talent and how much Welles admired him. In making The Twilight Zone, Rod Serling wrote many episodes, creating 92 out of 156 episodes in the original series. He played a big part in shaping the show's style and deep themes. James Best, known for The Dukes of Hazard, suggested Burt Reynolds for a movie role. Later, Reynolds, who had learned from Best, played that role in The Dukes of Hazard movie. At first, Westbrook Van Voorhees did the narration for the pilot episode, but Rod Serling took over because Van Voorhees couldn't continue. People doubted Serling at first, but his narration impressed everyone and became a permanent part of the series. When Van Voorhees couldn't continue, Serling stepped in, becoming both a writer and narrator for the show. This marked a big moment in the show's development as Serling guided viewers through the mysterious stories of the Twilight Zone. Burgess Meredith had an unusual moment when he got an unexpected award for a scene in Such Good Friends. Some people called it the most embarrassing nude scene in Hollywood history. In an episode called Living Doll, there's a story similar to one written by Ray Bradbury in 1946. Bradbury's story, The Small Assassin, is about a dangerous doll causing a deadly accident. Likewise, in Living Doll, Telly Savalas dies after falling over Talkie Tina and down the stairs. Paul Mazursky, who helped create the monkeys, also worked on this famous show. This shows his significant role in television. In a notable episode of the series, John Anderson engaged in a memorable fistfight with James Arness, setting a standard scene for aspiring editors. This episode also featured Jack Klugman, who later starred alongside Anderson in another iconic episode. Klugman showcased his talents in a solo performance in Burbank, California during September-October 2003. Bill Mummy, known for his role in the series, attempted to revive another iconic show with a screenplay in the late 1970s, but the plan fell through after key developments. These anecdotes provide insight into the diverse talents and endeavors of the actors associated with the series. In a notable musical homage, Michael Jackson incorporated Rod Serling's narrations from several episodes of the series into his song Threatened. Among these, the distinct voices of It's a Good Life and in his image stand out prominently. James Best, known for his various roles in the industry, released his autobiography titled Best in Hollywood the Good, the Bad, and the Beautiful just three days after celebrating his 83rd birthday on July 29, 29. The iconic high-pitched guitar riff in the theme music was skillfully performed by Howard Roberts, contributing to the show's unforgettable auditory landscape. When the show's running time was expanded to one hour for its fourth season, the episodes were met with little success or enthusiasm from the viewers. However, these one-hour episodes are more highly regarded these days. Burgess Meredith, known for his roles in Batman and various The Twilight Zone episodes, developed his grunting penguin laugh out of necessity during his time on Batman. He had given up smoking some 20 plus years earlier, but was required to smoke with a cigarette holder on the show. The smoke would get caught in his throat, so he developed a laugh to cover it up. He gave up smoking again immediately after the series ended. Bill Mummy, who acted in both the original and revived the Twilight Zone series, appeared in three classic The Twilight Zone episodes during the 1960s. Mummy even acted in a recent episode of the revived series alongside his daughter. Rod Serling, the prolific creator behind many of the iconic episodes of The Twilight Zone, held a special place in his heart for certain installments. Among the 92 episodes he penned, Time Enough at last stood as his personal favorite. However, when it came to works from other writers, Serling admired The Invaders by Richard Matheson. In an attempt to manage costs during the series' second season, the network experimented with shooting some episodes on videotape rather than film. This decision, influenced by budgetary constraints, posed challenges due to the limitations of the medium at the time. Editing videotape was cumbersome, leading to episodes being camera cut on studio sound stages using multiple cameras akin to live television. While this approach saved money, it restricted the potential scope of storylines as location shooting became impractical. Despite the initial cost savings, the experiment was short-lived and the series returned to filming on traditional film stock. 
Notably, six episodes were shot on videotape before being transferred to film for broadcast, saving producers a considerable sum per episode. James Best, known for his roles in various television shows and films, crossed paths with fellow actor James Drury during the making of Forbidden Planet in 1956. Despite neither having roles nor lines in the film, their paths would intersect again nine years later. Both actors collaborated on an episode of The Virginian in 1962, forging a friendship that endured until Best's passing in 2015. In the world of TV, a familiar face from The Twilight Zone, Bill Mummy, played Linear on Babylon 5 in 1993. He was also offered a role on Star Trek Deep Space Nine around the same time, but couldn't take it due to his commitments on Babylon 5. However, he did join DS9 for its last season, appearing as a Starfleet engineer in the episode The Siege of R-558 in 1998. Rod Serling, known for his work on The Twilight Zone, found success in Theater 2. His play, Requiem for a Heavyweight, won the 2019 Non-Equity Joseph Jefferson Award for Play Production when performed at the Artistic Home in Chicago, Illinois. James Best, another actor from The Twilight Zone, later opened the James Best Theater Center in Toluca Lake, California. It's located in the back of the Honey Baked Ham building on Riverside Drive and celebrates Best's work beyond TV. These actors, each with their unique paths after The Twilight Zone, show the different directions taken by those involved in the series. In the 1959 TV show The Twilight Zone, some actors played important roles in television. For instance, James Best, known for his part in The Dukes of Hazard, brought his dog Flash to the set, which added a nice touch to the episodes. John Anderson, who played a tough gunfighter named Oni in an episode of The Rifleman, also stood out with his strong performance. Another famous actor was Jack Klugman, praised for his work in The Odd Couple, whose presence brought depth and variety to the show. Their different skills and experiences helped shape the interesting story of The Twilight Zone, making it memorable and special. During the early days of the show, James Best faced a challenging commute for his role in another series. He traveled from Kinnears, Georgia, to film The Dukes of Hazard every Friday. Initially manageable, the journey became more demanding when production shifted to Burbank, California. For the second season, Best had to fly back and forth weekly. Despite health concerns, particularly after experiencing a heart attack, his friend Clint Eastwood supported him by securing insurance for his role in the Dukes of Hazard. Meanwhile, Rod Serling, the creative force behind the series, relocated to Pacific Palisades, California in 1958 as live television in New York declined. His residence placed him near notable neighbors like Ronald and Nancy Reagan. Serling's wife Carol continued to live in their home on Monaco Drive until her passing in 2020. In 1959, a groundbreaking TV series emerged, leaving a lasting impact on television. Since its start, The Twilight Zone has fascinated viewers with its mix of science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Throughout its run, the show featured many talented people who left their mark. One such person was James Best, who sadly passed away in 2015 at 88. Best, known for his role in The Dukes of Hazard, had a memorable career in TV and film. Another important figure in the show's history is Rod Serling. Despite his death in 1975, Serling made a posthumous return in 1994 to host the pre-show area of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror attraction at Disney MGM Studios theme park in Orlando, Florida. Through clever editing and the use of a sound-alike, he introduced theme park visitors to the attraction, marking the first new introduction of the Twilight Zone since the series end in 1964. Additionally, Morgan Brittany, known for her role in Dallas, faced a crucial moment in her career when her agent advised her to turn down a role in the Scarlet O'Hara War. However, Brittany insisted on taking the part, ultimately gaining recognition and paving the way for her most famous role. These individuals, among others, have contributed to the lasting impact of The Twilight Zone, solidifying its place in TV history. With three spin-offs in its history, The Twilight Zone has made a big impact on TV. Paul Mazursky's book talks about the show and gives us important information. While submitted for your approval is often linked to Rod Serling's famous beginnings, he only used this phrase three times in the series. Instead, in just a moment was Serling's favorite phrase used 25 times. Mazursky's book shows these details and helps us understand the careful work behind the show's lasting popularity. The Twilight Zone continues to interest viewers with its well-crafted stories and deep meanings. In the series, Ed Wynn and Keenan Wynn made notable appearances, marking a rare instance of a father-son duo in the cast. Ed featured in One for the Angels, while Keenan starred in a world of his own. 
Rod Serling, recognized as the show's host, had prior experience hosting the syndicated radio show The Zero Hour from 1973 to 1974. James' best lineage links him to musical icons, the Everly Brothers, as his mother, Lena Miguel, was the sister of Ike, their father. His father, Larkin Jasper Guy, held the role of house husband. Such connections enriched the background of those involved, adding depth to their contributions to the series. In lesser known trivia, James Best, recognized for his portrayal as Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane in the Dukes of Hazard, found love on set, marrying Dorothy Best seven years after their encounter during the show's production. Their union endured for 29 years. Moreover, Catherine Bach, Best's former co-star in the Dukes of Hazard, displayed a keen interest in his artwork, regularly visiting his personal website dedicated to his paintings. These connections shed light on the varied interests and relationships cultivated by those involved in the entertainment industry. In the late 1950s, a very important TV show started. It had really interesting stories that were different from usual. One of the actors in the show was Jack Klugman, who you might remember from the movie 12 Angry Men. He played a character who was the last juror left. Besides acting, Klugman also helped run a theater in New York for actors. Another actor from the show, Bill Mummy, was good friends with James Stewart. They were so close that they even went to the same church. In a movie they did together called Dear Bridget, you could see how much they liked each other. Mummy could imitate Stewart's voice perfectly, which made Stewart laugh a lot. These actors from The Twilight Zone weren't just good at acting, they also had interesting lives outside of the show. Jack Klugman worked to support other actors, and Bill Mummy had a special bond with James Stewart. This made the show even more special. Rod Serling, well known as a leading figure in sci-fi according to TV Guide, had a strong vision for The Twilight Zone. Even though he initially wanted Richard Egan's voice for narration, he ended up doing it himself due to contract reasons. Meanwhile, James Best and Dorothy Best, along with Kevin Lang, founded Best Friend Films. They specialize in high-quality production using advanced technology like the Panasonic Barracam and Panavision 35M lenses adapted for digital cameras. They provide a wide range of services for independent producers. Serling's determination and Best's innovative approach greatly contributed to the ongoing popularity of The Twilight Zone. In the 1960s, when they were picking actors for the Munsters, they thought about having Bill Mummy play Eddie Munster. But they didn't choose him because his parents were worried about the makeup he'd have to wear. Instead, Butch Patrick got the part. Jack Klugman acted in a play called The Value of Names in 2006. There's a documentary about Rod Serling called Submitted for Your Approval. Mummy and Patrick, who both played Eddie Munster, are good friends now and sometimes make music together. Klugman didn't just act on TV. He also did theater. The documentary talks about Serling and his work in television. These facts help us understand more about the people involved in the show. After his daughter Jajami was born, James Best nicknamed her the Tank because she was a little fat from overeating. John Anderson, known for his roles in various TV westerns, guest starred in three episodes as a former commander of a Civil War prison camp trying to hide under an assumed name to escape his past. In two episodes, he was remorseful for the deplorable conditions in his camp, while in another, he tried to eliminate anyone who discovered his true identity. On May 11, 2018, CBS listed the 10 most terrifying episodes of the series, including Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, Time Enough at Last, Living Doll, Eye of the Beholder, It's a Good Life, The Monsters Are Due on Maple Street, 22 Five Characters in Search of an Exit, The Masks, and The Hitchhiker. After the show got canceled in the mid-1960s, its TV ratings went down. There were 156 episodes in the original series, and he wrote 92 of them. He made a lot of money, getting $7,000 for each episode in the final season. He ended up making more money from owning 10% of The Odd Couple than from the show. This shows he was good at business and thinking ahead. He was not just known for The Twilight Zone, but also for being a big name in TV history. In the world of TV history, strong friendships often form behind the scenes, going beyond what we see on screen. One example is the bond between actor Bill Mummy and Jonathan Harris. Harris looked out for Mummy when he was just 11 years old, and they stayed close friends for nearly 40 years until Harris passed away in 22. Another lasting friendship was between actor James Best and comedian singer Andy Griffith. They became friends during an episode of The Andy Griffith Show, and their bond lasted for more than 50 years until Griffith died in 2012. Meanwhile, Rod Serling, the creator of The Twilight Zone, had his own struggles with TV networks meddling with his work. He used a fake name, John Phillips, for a pilot episode of another show to avoid interference. 
Serling wanted to keep control over his creative vision, despite network pressures. These stories give us a peek into the personal connections and challenges that shaped the Twilight Zone and its creators' legacies. In the world of 1950s TV, The Twilight Zone stands out as a show that people still love. One interesting thing about it is that some actors were in it for all five seasons. Besides the creator, Rod Serling, Robert McCord was in every season. Others like Jack Klugman, John Anderson, John Lormer, and Vaughn Taylor were also in multiple seasons, showing how the show stuck with a core group of actors. Vladimir Sokolov, a versatile actor, played characters from different countries on the show like Filipino, French, Greek, and Mexican. He added a lot to the stories, showcasing his talent. He was also known for roles in movies like For Whom the Bell Tolls and The Magnificent Seven. Actress Morgan Brittany and her high school friend Charles Martin Smith both went to Grover Cleveland High School, where they learned acting. This connection shows the talent that played a part in making The Twilight Zone a big deal. In classic TV, there are interesting connections between different works. For example, Jack Klugman, who was in the original 12 Angry Men movie, also appeared in the TV version. Later, the movie was remade with Klugman's co-star, Jack Lemmon. Klugman then starred in The Odd Couple, a TV series based on another movie where Lemmon had a big role. In April 2012, Klugman performed in 12 Angry Men again, but in a different role at a theater in New Brunswick, NJ. Behind the scenes, Rod Serling, who created The Twilight Zone, credited his school teacher, Helen Foley, for inspiring his writing passion. He thought his success was thanks to her encouragement. Interestingly, in the 1983 movie based on The Twilight Zone, there's a character named Helen Foley in tribute to Serling's beloved teacher. Also, there's a curious overlap in the music used in different TV shows. Some of the music from The Twilight Zone was also used in Perry Mason, connecting these two series. The Twilight Zone keeps captivating audiences with its timeless stories and unique twists, leaving a lasting impression on TV. Rod Serling, the creator of the show, was remembered by many actors as perfectly affable. The episodes in seasons 1, 2, 3, and 5 had a duration of 30 minutes each. However, in season 4, episodes were one hour long due to CBS changing the show's time slot availability. This alteration allowed only hour-long episodes. Morgan Brittany, known for her dark hair and fine features, bore an uncanny resemblance to Vivian Lee. Consequently, she was cast as Lee in three projects, including The Day of the Locust, Gable and Lombard, and The Scarlet O'Hara War. In 2009, the U.S. Postal Service made stamps honoring old TV shows. One stamp showed Rod Serling, who made The Twilight Zone. He was the creator and host. Other stamps featured shows like The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. Burgess Meredith, from the Twilight Zone movie, died a day after his co-star, Helen Shaw. Rod Serling wanted viewers to send him scripts. He got 14,000, but only liked two. Sadly, neither was right for the show. The Twilight Zone is famous for its unique stories and deep themes. It's an important part of TV history. At a convention in Hasbrook Heights, N.J. Morgan Brittany made an appearance in 26. Meanwhile, Jack Klugman's personal life grabbed headlines when his former partner, Barbara Nugas, pursued legal action against him, claiming he had promised her support. Despite being dubbed as the scariest episode by critics, the dummy remains a standout in the series. Critics have consistently rated it as one of the most chilling episodes in the series. Following the departure of Buck Houghton after the third season, the series saw changes in its production team. Meanwhile, James Best, recognized for his role on the Dukes of Hazard, demonstrated his expertise with firearms stemming from his service in the United States Army Air Forces during World War II. During his time in the military, he trained as a gunner on a B-17 bomber. Interestingly, Rod Serling, the show's creator, spent close to a year crafting the screenplay for the original Planet of the Apes movie, going through approximately 50 different drafts. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the diverse talents and experiences that contributed to the success of the show. In a famous sci-fi series, John Anderson faced a challenging role after a period of deep sadness. He really tapped into his feelings to truly show his character's sadness, putting lots of raw emotion and openness into every scene. At the same time, Jack Klugman, known for being good at many things, found himself working again with a former co-worker in an exciting play. Their smooth teamwork showed how well they worked together and how much they respected each other professionally. These examples show how personal experiences can really affect how well an actor plays their part, making it more real and emotional.